Cuba, January 2003, our reluctant first day in Havana. We finally found a mechanic who could help us put our bikes together. We paid him 10 US a month's wages. Dustin with the balloons, the whole neighborhood came along. Everybody likes a good sword fight. Our first day of riding, we rode to the airport to pick up our missing bag and saw some of these posters on our way about the revolution. Fidel, 44 years of the revolution. We will fight until victory. And some of the other posters had to do with the environment, protect the ozone layer. Highway riding. The autopista. Here I'm sharing the road with cars and horses. Buying cheese and guava jam on the highway. A specialty of the region. The entrance to Las Terraza, New Year's Eve. Trail behind the French coffee plantation in the Biosphere Reserve. And this is a reforested area, Fidel reforested during the revolution. Mm -hmm. Called San Rosario. And this is the ruins of the French coffee plantation. With a terracing type of agriculture. Easy highway. San Juan de los Baños, it was river bathing pools that are part of the reserve. Teaching juggling to some locals. And this was our day out of the reserve, cycling from the reserve to our next destination. A friend in a logging truck. And some crude oil. <laughs> A vehicle burning crude oil, as you can see the black smoke. Dustin made some balloons for the kids. Saroa, this is also part of the Biosphere Reserve, which has an orchid garden. A town along the way, where we stopped to buy some bread. And some more kids running for more balloons. We stopped to make one balloon, and then one kid, two kids, ten kids. Pretty soon the whole community was there. We had to leave. The tow rope along the highway. A wheelchair bicycle and a horse cart behind. And a bridge, Cuban style. Some colonial architecture in San Diego de los Baños. Dustin getting his first professional shave. This man lived inside this house and you'd knock on his door to get him to come over to be a shave. A picture of all my mosquito bites. Some off-road trails. We got lost. Entering the Valley of Vinales. Bikes cuddling on the side of the road. Some farmers with their oxen in the fields. Chickens following. And a well-needed water break. It was rum. <laughs> the Cuban countryside. And more of the Cuban countryside. And more of the Cuban countryside. Fishing! with some locals. They invited us to fish. We didn't catch anything. <laughs> the um, limestone things at hills are called mojotes. That's a bike. Rain ready. It was wet that day. <laughs> it trenched a downpour on us for 15-20 minutes really hard. Cubans asked us to come in under the shelter. We said no. It was wet. 
It was warm. It was really wet. Finally, we reached our destination in Vinales and... Picked up a couple of hitchhikers. In the caves. Vinales is known for caves. A really messy photo. Far wanted a romantic photo. Some more pictures of the mojotes. Hundreds of years ago, the rivers carved out caves from these limestone structures. A woodworker's house. Two friends, black and white, hanging out together. Egret hangs with the oxen. Coming in from a picnic by the river. Sheep on the road. Stopping off at a toll booth before reaching a secluded beach called Kaya Hutia. This is where we camp. In the background, they had a midnight fiesta. Not a lot of sleep was had. And in the morning, we got attacked ruthlessly by mosquitoes and sand fleas. This was going out of the Vinales Valleys. The Cuban bed and breakfast place where we stayed in Vinales. Via Carrie. Carrie is the one that owned it. It's called the Casa Particulares. This is a pretty styling room in Cuban. Cuban sandwich. Dustin with his pet pig. He was enjoying me. It was cold. <laughs> it was cold. We didn't come to Cuba for that. This is a friend of ours that uh, joined up with Farah. Happened to be a couple years older, and he rode with us for maybe 10, 15 kilometers. The truth is, I had trouble keeping up to him. Entering Sandino, some more socialist posters on the buildings, and our friends in Sandino. Dustin making some balloons for a rural, rural school. They had sand fleas there too. A lot of sand fleas in Cuba. Notice a solar panel which powers the television so that kids can watch educational programs. Maria La Gorda. Cuban paradisical beaches. It was nice. No sand fleas. We took a dip in the pool after a long ride. Otherwise known as an ocean. And we swam with fish. There was fish there too. Fish swimming around the ocean that we could see. AKA pool. <laughs> Some people hitching a ride on a logging truck. Our campsite. Our campsite just before the entrance to the Biosphere Reserve. This is a view from the radar tower. And one of the weathermen, a meteorologist, took us up to the tower and then showed us the radar machine and explained how it worked. Yeah, the radar machine. Entering the Guanacabibe Peninsula, which is another biosphere reserve. With our guide, Osmani. We rented him a scooter and he rode with us. A couple of our friends, pigs. Some wild pigs. The vegetation of the reserve changed three or four different times. Farah forging ahead, leaving us behind. <laughs> and then having to stop so that a pig could cross the road. This was the most westerly point, Cabo de San Antonio, which has a lighthouse, a very famous lighthouse. Returning on the off-road. It was 54 kilometers in, 54 kilometers out. This is an iguana. There were a few of them working around. They didn't like being out there, having the picture taken though. They were building the road or actually fixing it with uh, dynamite. They blow big holes in it and leave it. Another iguana in the background. 
Dustin trying his hardest to get a picture of this iguana that didn't want his picture taken there in another attempt. They were there, trust me. And rats. Tree rats. Tree rats that look like beavers. They definitely didn't want their picture taken. By the time we reached back, it was sunset, and we had a picture with our guide at sunset. I was pretty tired. I was really tired. Another dude. The military dude looking after the gate. Far out. Tired. But with a beautiful sunset. This was in San Vino. We got some aloe vera plant and tried to make it into a cream. And this was a family that we stayed with. We needed the cream because we figured the guy at the peninsula stole ours. And this is on our way out. We are realizing the impossible, Che Guevara, eating some coconut flavored ice cream. With an audience. This was the first rent by the hour room that we entered. Lots of peace, no bugs. Dinner in a bag. Dustin with some cowboys on the side of the road. More of the Cuban countryside. Some cows. More cows. Uh, the same cows. A Cuban just riding with us. More auto pista. Buying bread and uh, Artemisa. Some friends, Ski uh, skaters, the head of the skaters, Jorge. Other friends in art, the music that we met. This was the landfill just outside of art, Very small. And a train that just stopped on the tracks. Cuban transport for people. Stopping for some pizza. And being led by a boy to the next town and he was holding a dead chicken in the bag. Dustin making friends with the bull. Or oxen. School. Cuban school. Looking through the louvers. No windows. Not necessary. From colonial architecture in San Felipe. San Felipe is the home place where we stayed in the home of a, a famous Cuban singer from the group Orishas. Mm -hmm. And we got a guided tour of the town. This is a town where prior to the revolution, blacks and whites were living on different sides of the railroad tracks, literally. And then after the revolution, when Fidel ended racism, everybody started intermingling. We took a wrong turn and, by mistake, reached the southern coast, which was worth it for the view. The three minutes that we were there. Asking for directions right beside the banana plantation. Right by the hour. Drafting behind... A Basque cyclist. And there they are, 60 and 62 years old, two months in Cuba on their bicycles. Here are their bicycles. This is the amount of tools they took, about a hundredth of what we brought. This was the Zapata Peninsula, which uh, was home to many migratory birds and also some flamingos. On the way to the Bay of Pigs from Playa Larga. Playa Hiron. Victory over the Americans in the Bay of Pigs, in the Bay of Pigs Museum. Wind! And look at those trees. Whew, it was windy that day. The road was really trashed too. Drafting behind a horse drawn cart. Another rent by the hour room. Cuban style plumbing. This lady was collecting water for her day. No, no other taps worked far. This is far doing laundry. No wonder we stunk on the plane. I did. Helping a, a Cuban man fix his tire. And he gave us some of his uh, sugar cane. Chew on. It's 
good stuff. Drafting behind another wagon cart, looking for a rent, rent by the hour room. And we ended up here at this place. With two young children, nobody else around. They've taken over the town. And then they forced Cuban propaganda and made us look at this map. <laughs> we racing with a couple horse drawn carts. Hey. On our way to Cardenas, the Elian Gonzalez Museum. And then on to the north coast. To Matanzas. And some of the villages along the way. My first attempt at cooking in Cuba. It was good. Some Cuban cyclists we met that would get their hair cut prior to a, a race. This is the school they trained at. It's actually a fairly fun school. There's a in the background. This is the average Cuban mechanic's tools. For bikes, that is. This is a, a bike stand that they repair their bikes on. This is these Cuban cyclists on the coast of Matanza with us. The water is really deep in the bay. Six deepest in the world, overlooking Matanza. The school, from an aerial view. Getting ready for a competition, the morning up, on the freeway. A fisherman thought he'd get in the race too. And an old veteran was by the road too. One of the bridges separates the Havana province from the Matanza province. And this is some of the road that they, by the cyclists traveled along. This is Jordi. And this is Vincent, two of the cyclists. And they're training on their roles. And there I am, Cuban transport. These are accommodations that the junior cyclists live in while they're training. This is the state of the building that keeps all their training equipment. This is the door. And inside we have the weight room. And this is beside the mechanics area. There's the mechanics area. This is me helping a couple of young cyclists with the tube. They don't have the money or even can even buy a tube or a tire. So we help when we can. There's Farah resting. It was cold. Farah fell. This is the scab. Helping another dude with a tube. It's a Chinese style system. A style and bike. Dominoes competition, a qualification round for the world competition. Most of our food is cooked in that big black pot. An old Vancouver bus that somehow made its way to Cuba. Cuban transport for dudes. This band of teenagers would practice outside the school. This is Cuban ingenuity. They would use that can and plug it into the wall and heat up water. It's like a dream. So that's getting ready. Look, look at the less stuff. Much less stuff. This is the North Coast. On our way home. Protect the environment. Our view of the ocean from our hotel room that we paid two dollars and fifty cents Canadian for for the last two nights we stayed. This is from the dining room. This is looking through the windowless window <laughs> out onto the ocean. Fara, get some oil. <laughs> a brand new oil rig in a oil field about five minutes from where we were staying. And we just walked through it. We encountered some sheep living around the oil. And the some of the pumps were within 30 feet of the ocean. And old machinery. Hotel. Body surfing the day before we leave. Our little friend on the beach. A 
An old hotel. Dilapidated. Our last day in Cuba at the Jose Marti Airport. My last day too. Our last picture with our bikes that we won't see again. This is the workers free ECAP. Taking the bikes, our stuff's all boxed up. Being our last dues in Cuba, $25 US each, airport tax. Feel free to dance. <laughs> <laughs>